comrades, uh, just a little bit ago, the Amazing Atheist made a video where he discusses how he came across a, a blog where it says that all heterosexual intercourse in this society is rape. Now, obviously, um, his understanding of feminist theory is not very strong. And I have had now a couple of people message me asking me what I thought about it and where I actually stood on the issue because it is, it's, it's a very intense issue. It's, it's, uh, it's controversial, meaning a lot of people get upset about when talking about it. Like it's like, it really causes a lot of drama and it's an intense issue. Although in truth, it really shouldn't be. But um, because I have been asked more than once where I stood on this issue, I felt it was important that I did say something. Now, in order for me to explain this theory, I have to explain something else first, base and superstructure. We have both of these in society. The base is a political economy, capitalism, socialism, feudalism, whatever, whatever our um, method of production is. And there is a superstructure that comes out of that, meaning our social institutions, religions, uh, education, work environment, media, family, whatever, meaning the relations that we have between each other and the institutions of those relations that spring from the productive relations of the society we have. Obviously, as humanity progressed and got newer and uh, better means of production, those altered the relationships between people. Obviously, we don't live in the same societies we did in hunter-gatherers, and the social relations are different as well. Okay, this is the idea that we have to understand. We have a base that, in our case, is capitalism, and then we have a superstructure that comes out of that. What we understand is that the superstructure that we live in, that being the one that springs from capitalism, has a rape culture. It has a sexist culture. Therefore, we understand all relations between men and women in this context, being uh, heterosexual sex, exists within that context, meaning we have to understand that context and those relations when we think about penetrative sex. What this means is, is that the act of sex or the relations that lead up to sex are influenced by the rape culture. They're influenced by the sexist society we have. Um, one very easy example that I can give you is, we've all seen the scenario where there's this teenage girl, 14, 16 years old, let's say, and she's going over in her mind and speaking out loud with her friends about losing her virginity. She wants to have sex with him because she feels like this is something that people do. This is something you do in a relationship. Or I have to do this or I'm going to lose my boyfriend. Or, you know, stuff like that where she feels compelled by forces other than herself to do it. Now, this is a very overt manifestation of it, meaning it's very obvious to someone standing outside of it. To the, the, the teenage mind that doesn't understand these things very well, uh, it's virtually hidden from them, although it's very much there. This also exists in adult life as well, meaning these things have subconscious effects on our actions, meaning this is still a force in our society and influences our decision whether or not to do certain things, including the act of sex itself, meaning we understand that the choice to have sex and the act of it exists within that social context. An example of this that we would see in the adult world is a, when a couple gets married. Although no one forces a woman to, there is still the expectation that she will stay home and take care of the kids, whether that manifests itself in an overt way or not. That idea still pervades our society, even when people say they don't believe in it. The idea, the cultural influence, the effect of the superstructure is still there. So her decision whether or not to stay home and take care of the kids is highly affected by that, even if it is on a subconscious level. Now, a lot of people point out um, it's voluntary. She chose to do that. She chose to have sex. She chose to stay home and take care of the kids. Now, I would like to put this in a Marxist perspective. Um, because my audience is obviously Marxist. 
you often have oppressed countries where they ally to the to the exploiters. Uh, like they ally to the people who come in, the imperialists who come in, they own their land, they own this and own that, and they're very loyal to them, and they like them for coming in. When you see a lot of these countries, uh, like the Philippines, where they say, we love the Americans, we love what they do for us, even though what they do is insanely harmful to the country, they still like them and ally to them. Even though it may be explicitly expressed as consensual, meaning they want them there, they like it being connected, that doesn't make it a good thing. Just because someone likes to do something doesn't make it a good thing or make it right. It exists in this society as well. Again, I will return to the example of the teenage girl. She doesn't really understand that her choice is being so heavily influenced by the culture that exists, in this case, the superstructure. And this happens in imperialism, in religions, although a religion will often n not have a literal physical coercive force to make somebody do something. It still has its way of doing it and shaping the way people think in order to carry out its functions. Um, this part of it's kind of hard to explain, so I, I, I hope I'm doing a good enough job of that here. Now, as for my personal opinion on the subject, I would disagree that it is all rape, because to say that would be to completely eliminate the possibility of free choice. And there has to be a free choice, even if it exists in a small way. That is not to say that rape culture doesn't have this effect. I would say it very heavily influences uh, heterosexual sex, but I would say that it is not a 100% determinant because that would literally eliminate the possibility of free will. And I don't believe that that's really the case. I would say it's a very heavily influencing act, uh, act upon people of a lower social consciousness, uh, particularly uh, very young adults, teenagers, etc. people with very little life experience, it would have a tremendous influence. Obviously, life experience in these cases would make the effect of that much, much less. So I'm saying I don't believe that all heterosexual sex in this society is rape because that would eliminate the possibility of free will. And obviously, I believe in free will. So that I would say that in society, a lot of the heterosexual sex would be possibly classified in this case. I would say a lot of it is, but not all of it, because that would eliminate the possibility of free will. So that's my position on it. Uh, I hope I've explained it better to you and that you have a better understanding of this theory. So I would definitely recommend that anybody watching this video would go out and research the actual theory itself so they had a better understanding of what it is that's being talked about, as opposed to listening to some talking head like myself on YouTube. Please investigation has to be done. Theory, practice theory. Uh, go on with that, learn about the subject, and decide for yourself. And I hope this video cleared some things up for you.